Holy moly. I'll tell you, moving, getting ready to move. I'm putting on the headphones in a second. Don't worry. Um, but I have needed more energy, obviously, and I've been talking about it for a little bit, that I've needed more energy without the jitters of coffee and all those things and the forced energy drinks. And that's why I have been, uh, I've been doing Magic Mind, guys. And I've been telling you about Magic Mind, and I love Magic Mind. They've been with us for a little bit because um, I just have that kind of clean energy, and I don't have the jit jitters. I love the fact that all they do with the adaptogens and what they have, it's great. And I love the fact that they have this relationship with you guys now. I've been getting so many people telling me how much they've been enjoying Magic Mind. So here we go. Magic Mind, this is it. I also like the taste. It's got like an orange juice flavor to it. But that's me. Um, anyway, if you go to magicmind.com slash the big thing and you use that code big thing, get yourself a little bit of a discount on Magic Mind and you will thank me. So head on over there. It's the first link in the description. It is magicmind.com slash the big thing. Use that code big thing. All right, here we go. Here's UAP Tuesday. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to The Big Thing. It's UAP Tuesdays. Thanks for joining us here today on the show. There's a lot to discuss, man. So we've been talking about it. We've been talking about when are there going to be more hearings. We had an opportunity to hear from um, Tim Burchett last week from Ask a Poll, and he was talking about that he believes that a lot of the whistleblowers that David Grush spoke to will be talking at the next hearing. He was asked about that hearing, and that hearing is, is apparently going to happen soon. It seems like there's more rumblings about when that hearing is going to happen. Well, Gillibrand was also asked about that. And then there was more things from her that people were starting to say she's more connected to Arrow, more connected to um, Lockheed Martin, and certain things that she said in a particular interview that had David Grush respond. David Grush pretty much said, none of the people that I spoke to the, my witnesses that I talked to about this stuff, none of them feel comfortable talking to Arrow. None of them. Um, so they haven't spoken to him because they don't trust them. They don't trust that they're going to be protected. What does that mean for the hearing? What does that mean overall? Is Are they going to actually, because Gillibrand's saying also that there's going to be a hearing. And then it also said, Burchette is saying there's going to be a hearing. There's certain witnesses that are going to be there that Arrow doesn't have control of. Obviously, I don't know. So there's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot to it. There's a ton of of stuff that's out there. I mean, uh, Bledsoe, Chris Bledsoe was, had an interview the other day, I guess another one of these Twitter spaces interviews, and he made some wild claims, wild claims. And he's, and he's one of the more trusted guys out there in the space. So we're going to go over a couple things. And there was one video that was shown that said, this is legit. This is, this is a real thing. And if so, what does that mean overall? So that's me and Riley today. We're going to be talking about all that and more. So make sure that if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. But I'm going to tell you this. This will be the last UAP Tuesday on this channel. This will be the last one. So next week, starting next week, we have a channel already called Down to Earth with Christian Harloff. That's already been going since March. And we put one news story out a day. I think what Tuesdays will be moving forward is Tuesday we'll have UAP Tuesdays on that channel in the morning and then later on in the day you'll get that news piece so if you haven't subscribed to that channel do that and we're already over like twenty five thousand over there and if we grow over there and we start putting it out over there as i think that now the algorithm's telling people hey it's uh if you like ufo stuff then check out this idiot's channel over there here they're going to talk about furiosa and the acolyte so, unfortunately, we're, we're going to have to move it over there. So, that's what we're doing. Um, okay. And I think it makes more sense anyway that it, that it lives over there. And I think a lot of you have told me that. So, let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's get into the big thing. It's myself. It's Riley. Here we go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the final UAP Tuesday on this channel. And if you're listening on audio, nothing changes. It's going to be on the Down to Earth podcast feed and it'll stay there. But joining me as always, my co host, Mark Yodius Riley. What's up, Mark? How are you doing? I'm good, Christian. Pleasure to be here for the last show in studio on this channel. And in, and, and, in, in, and, and in this studio, yes. And in studio. It's a big day. Yeah. So for people, as you can see, like there's a little, little barren back there. It's like just. 
There's nothing here. Trash over there. But uh, it's only because it's – this will be the last show before we do the official move to New York. Uh, Riley will still be on the show. We're still yeah. doing the UAP Tuesdays. Like I said, it will be on Down to Earth. Um, and then we'll also still have Pavel and, and Attack Peter and everybody you know still popping in over there. It's just going to be a different studio. So – once again, make sure you subscribe over there. But Riley, I was telling you, man, we had. Um, I know that you, and I know you're in Babyland right now, and it's it's yeah. tough. But there's, as we've mentioned, there's just so many stories, and it seems like things are heating up again. Finally, yes. Uh, you know, I said we we're going to get to it, but you know, when uh, David Grush speaks, you know, people listen. Yeah. In this community, and it and it kind of reveals some things that are very very uh, consequential mm -hmm. to what's going on out there that will lead to the hearings and all of that and I think that's great because how long can we just sit here talking about well they need to have a hearing well David Grush needs to you know kind of talking around in circles this is like probably some of the biggest news that I've been a part of uh, in a long time it feels like yeah I feel so I feel the same way and so just to give a little back history we did cover it on Down to Earth in one of the news pieces last week but um. Matt Laszlo over uh, at Ascapol was talking to D Tim Burchett, and, and Tim Burchett is pretty frustrated with things. He seems to be more frustrated than, than most, um, but they were talking a little bit more about that conversation that they had had with the Department of Energy at one point mm -hmm. and how him and Luna both kind of did a strategic play on how to discuss the UAP phenomenon, do all these things. And then he was talking about the hearing. He does believe that the hearing itself will be will happen. And yep. Matt asked him for a date, uh, whether it was going to be August or he didn't. He didn't really commit, but he said it's it's they're looking for a date to lock one down. So it right. seems like it's going to happen in general. What he doesn't think is going to happen, and I don't know if you and I discussed it last time you were on, or if it was um, recently when I was talking about it. But Robert Garcia, Democrat had put together a full on like 30 pages worth of notes to the Schumer rounds bill to where the stuff that's in there is just, if it passes, it's like, it's, it's, it's over but, yeah. but for, for as far as it's over, as far as, you know, you can't be quiet anymore, but myself, other people and Burchett don't think it's going to happen. think it's going to be gutted. But the difference is I didn't like the way Burchett approached it mm. in this particular case, because as my, in my um, opinion, you and I have talked about this. This is the most bipartisan topic I've ever seen anybody. When you look at that hearing last year, which is almost a year ago, by the way. I know. I can't believe it. But you look at that hearing, and that hearing was the most bipartisan thing I've ever seen yeah. where everybody was on the same page, and it was one of the things. Because if all of it is indeed true what we say it is supposed to you know what we hope it's going to be that some kind of information that the human race needs to know about and it doesn't matter what your politics are yeah Richet started making some reference about the the fact that robert garcia was a democrat that this is it and started making about the day i was like don't do it you're going to lose me because if, if the democrats start talking about how it's a republican thing and the republicans start talking about democrat you, you're going to lose me yeah because that that's why i'm so so uh, passionate about this. Yeah, me too. I feel it's like the one thing that can break up this silly, uh, you know, partisanship, if you will. Isn't it the thing that can it can end all partisanship and, and, and it bring the human race together because something exists that is far beyond us, that is greater than anything that we've been talking about on this planet? Right. I mean, this is this is world breaking stuff. It's it's just it. And and, as, I, and I well, want it to be and it, it, I want it to be something that brings us together. Yeah, because well, Ross Coulthard talked about it. And he did this huge speech, um, and he was talking about it in general. One of the things he said was that that there were some of these scientists that he talked about that if some of the information came out of the stuff that they knew and that they would let it out, the world would change overnight. Yeah, like overnight. And some of the stuff that like Bledsoe talks about, like. He's talking about how some of these things can cure cancer and all this yeah. other stuff. And it's like, you know, when you're, it's like, you know, your mind can't hold all of it because yeah. as we've discussed many times over, you're like, okay, what is potentially real? What is potentially just fantasy? What is potentially? It's I, so hard to get. It's so there. hard. It's what, what is going to cross over to, to get people to either believe or become a believer right. or to to fire up those neurons that make them want to go in and, and learn something or or investigate themselves because it is it's a lot to take it's a lot to be like it's to, to vet 
Like, is this real? Right. Is this real? Right. And uh, it, you bring up all that other stuff. I mean, we had Ashton on who, oh, yeah. like, uh, he's saying that this kind of stuff can... I saw a tweet. He was like, oh, yeah, SpaceX is launching a rocket again. You know, if only this stuff would come out, this would be just whatever. Right. It doesn't matter. We'd have free energy. Anti-gravity. Anti-gravity. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we live... We're, we are talking about stuff that it's just mind-bending what could be done for the human race. Well, especially, I would highly recommend people listening to the uh, the speech that Colhart gave because the stuff that he was talking about inside of that, the things, the potential programs and all these other things that are out there, and, and this is jumping back to Burchette or what he said about what people are going to be happy with. And what you and I have been talking about many times over on this show is that People will not be happy in this hearing unless people are talking about, I've touched these craft. I've worked on these craft. There's, here's this. Here's this particular picture. This is what I can tell you. It's not like, yeah. oh, I heard from a guy who heard from a guy who saw a guy do this, or I can tell you in a skiff. I can tell you. That nothing, was last year. That was last year. Yeah. Nothing against Grush. That's all he could say. No, he moved, he, the, he moved the goalposts, right. and now we have to get to the, the, the end zone here. Right. And speaking of all of that, and speaking of how that leads into it, so and speaking of Matt Laszlo and Ask a Poll, he spoke to Gillibrand, and this was some of the stuff that was said leading into the Grush stuff. All right, so Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, both Intelligence and Armed Service Committees, um, they asked Matt asked if there's any updates on a Senate UAP hearing with Arrow. To which she said, I said I wanted to do it this summer, and he said he'd love to do it. That's what Gillibrand told Ask a Poll. And then he said, I told him I wanted to do a video of the things that he's figured out, because likely they, f they figured out a bunch of things that looked really weird, and now I want to know what they are, because it gives the community something to fully understand to see how strong the science is. That's what Gillibrand said. And then it said that both Gillibrand and an aide were walking through the basement of the U.S., uh, Capitol on their way to Senate floor when Matt Laszlo asked something real quick and Gillibrand asked him what he has. He said, okay, do you have a second? He asked if there was any update again on Arrow, uh, on Arrow's um, Kirkpatrick's interim, into which she said, no, I haven't scheduled it. I told my staff to schedule it. So whatever that particularly means there. Okay, so look, the good news is that there's seems to be movement from all sides that want to move this thing forward, right? So I guess the question then is, if you're going to do this, because it doesn't seem like she's saying the right things, the wrong, and by not saying anything, she might be saying some of the wrong things. Mm. Meaning that, like, why wouldn't she say, yes, we're going to do the hearing. We're very curious to hear from David Grush's witnesses. But it's it's more like, well, I want to hear what Arrow is going to say. And Arrow, and Arrow, and Arrow. She's like, she's so Arrow-focused. And nobody trusts Arrow, which is going to be the major thing of our story here today. Yeah, and exactly. so that makes me nervous of what she's, if she's that tied into it, and she's tied into Arrow and putting together the head, a new head of Arrow. It's like Arrow has lost so much credibility in this. Like who, who's, who's taking what they're saying serious at this point? Yeah. And, and moreover is, is, is it contingent on Arrow to be involved for these kind of things? Is she going to be like, well, we need to wait for them? And then, yeah, it's DOD. Know. They have they, they kind of have to be. And we're going to get to that story with Grush and everything. But that's yeah, they're not credible anymore. It's 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 hard to take anything seriously. I mean, we have Kirkpatrick. We were talking last show. I was on just a kind of bold face lied about right. things, to which he still I don't think has responded to. No, of course not. He's going right. to sit in his little cave wherever and be like, "Where's mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> But that's that's a thing. I mean, that that didn't seem like any kind of confirmation. It just came, feels again like, when are we going to have these hearings? It's like, oh, we'll we, we have them soon. You know, it's uh, soon. You know, and it just kind of moves on, and we talk about it, and we talk about it, and we go, great, great, great. And then if she's bringing up Arrow, it's just like then what? August, July, whatever it may be, and then all of a sudden, five shows from now, we're talking about November. Well, they're talking about November. See, I don't think so. I think that they were gonna. The question, the the more fear that I have is, they will do a hearing, but what does it look like? Right, it's gonna be watered down. Right. Like, what does yeah. it look like? It's like, it's it's Arrow's hearing of Arrow, the, basically that same kind of report. Nothing that, to see here. Right. It's that report that came out yeah. of like, no, 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 we don't have any evidence of this. And this this will show you guys. Like, because if Arrow does a hearing and then it's all of these things like, no, 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 here are the witnesses that we have. And 
They say they didn't see anything at all. They don't have anything there at all. There's nothing there. And that's what they start to pick up and the mainstream media starts to pick it up as opposed to, well, wait a minute. Why aren't the people who are running this thing, why, why don't like the Lunas and, and Moskowitz and Burchett and, you know, Schumer and all of them, why aren't they heavily involved in this? And why is it Gillibrand and Arrow doing it? That's, right. that's what, I, that was what, makes, what makes me nervous. That makes me nervous, too. And we need somebody there at that hearing, if that does happen, going, well, uh, why are there people afraid to talk about you that don't trust you? And you where know, are Russia's I, witnesses? Yeah, and where are the people that right. that have the knowledge yeah. that you're saying are not speaking to you yeah. because they're coming out saying, we don't trust you. And you're saying there's nothing to see here. I mean, see, the, do, do you see what's happening? Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, that's well. That's why. The, and the que- and that will be the question is, and even if you're going to try to discredit them, fine, put them up there and try to discredit them if you if you if you're going to, but at least let them be heard. Let them be heard. They're up there and they're taking an oath. Right. And that is huge. I mean, that that means a lot to me. That means a lot of people that that serve in the military, that mm-hmm. serve the United States government. You know, going up there, it's not something these people take lightly where they go, oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm taking an oath. No, d- d- that is important. So when they go up there and they put it all on, on the table and they say, I've seen this or I've touched this or I have a picture with Fred the alien who yeah. just landed in my backyard. Like Fred's a good guy. Yeah. Fred's a good guy. Yeah. But, but if they're coming up there and they're under oath, that means something and we need to see that. And by putting these continuous smoke screens in front of us. If it is, and to be fair, we don't know that that's what it's going to be. It just smells like that's, that's what it could be, right? right. That's and what we hope. So David Grush, we haven't heard from. Yeah. He's been um, MIA, if you will. He was supposed to be in the the um this was it the salt right yeah was? yeah and this the salt foundation is that what it is yeah i thought it was the salt yeah, yeah. Foundation. and so he was supposed to do that and then carl nell wind up stepping in and had some pretty big things to say there and so we didn't uh, still where's where was grush where was grush scheduling is what they said for grush and then going back to that that interview that we talked about with Matt Laszlo with Tim Burchette, they asked him about for a while now. They've been talking about how David Grush could be working with the UAP caucus, and what was a little bit troubling for me in this, Riley. I don't know if you heard this part of it yet, but when they asked him about it, like everyone, you would assume it was like, yeah, he's going to be working with us. We got him set up. He's good. It's like he's like we don't have the budget for it. Is what he said. Mm-hmm. He said we don't have the budget for it. Plus, I don't know how much that would help us. He said. Mm. And I, it, I scratch my head at that um, because there's other people who seem to help a lot, but I, I don't know. It seems like that that particular thing is going to happen. So then I'm like, oh, well, okay. So yet again, no word from Grush. Well, over the weekend, we heard from Grush. He responded to some of these things from um, for Arrow in general, and this is this is what he said. All right, now I pulled this one over here from Skyfire News, which is, again, big, bold statement, new David Grush statement. David Grush states that none of his 40 whistleblowers spoke with Arrow out of distrust. He also says that Senator Gillibrand does not have access to his whistleblower list, to which the statement from Grush reads, I am not aware of any of the 40 primary interview subjects that have formed the basis of my ICIG whistleblower complaint have gone to Arrow to be interviewed. The witnesses conveyed to me a lack of trust in Arrow and the command climate. I am only aware of three individuals with mostly secondhand knowledge that were interviewed by Arrow that I also spoke with some years back during my research process. Those individuals did produce some interesting leads I followed, but it appears Arrow did not have the expertise to distill the information they were given as it should have provided them access to a large body of foreign intelligence and other U.S. program information I had access to that is not reflected in the Arrow Historical Report, Volume 1. Senator Gillibrand does not have access to my witness list, so I am unaware how the senator allegedly has made any assessment in that regard. Now, that is going back, obviously, to the claims, I guess, that they're not going to talk to his witnesses, not gonna, that, however it might be, but he came out firing and going, look, here's the bottom line. No one trusts Arrow. The people that I spoke to, that I'm, the whole reason I'm sitting here talking to you today that anyone knows my name are because I've spoken to these people yep. and none of them want to deal with the official government agency yeah. that deals with this stuff. Hello, Project Blue Book, 
all over again. Yeah, this is this <laughs> this is dumb. Yeah, this is if these forty individuals are not trusting Arrow, and then all of these hearings are around Arrow, and Gillibrand is waiting for them to say, "Yeah, we'll do it in August." And we'll sit down where they go. Nothing to see here, everybody. This is bu- then that is bullshit. Then Who wants this, that this, here? That nobody wants that hearing. Then right. this becomes a big fat zero goose egg nothing, and we're sitting here going, "Great, great. What do we have to do to get these forty people to step forward and have faith?" to be a whistleblower, to go and be under oath. Yeah, well, I think it comes back to and I, the, why we lumped all these stories together. Where, where well, Burchett, they go hand in hand. Yeah, here. but what Burchett was talking about, he seems like in the side of that interview with Laszlo that he is confident that a lot of these witnesses will come forward, but to them, and he's not, and he said this, remember this interview, we covered this on the show, and I think it was News Nation that talked to him outside of the hill, and he was he was talking to them, and he said, I'm not giving any names of potential people that will come forward because last time I did that, NASA told them don't testify and they got spooked and they didn't do it. Yes. He's like, so I'm not doing that again. And he said as much with Leslie because I'm not, I'm not saying any of the names or who I think it's going to be or any of that because I don't want them to be confiscated. I don't want them to be compromised. Yeah. So um, he seems to be pretty confident on it. Luna they let let up that interview that she did a little while ago where she essentially said she was men in black mm-hmm. with and and she talked about how that there was somebody who told her hey well you you don't have access to this she said what the hell are you talking about remember members of congress of course we do who are you and she's kind of like fighting against it also so i feel like and then you look at what robert garcia is doing you look at all everyone's doing it's like you, that's what i mean like as if gillibrand is the one running it now with everyone pushed off to the side, well, that's a problem. It doesn't. I don't know if that's the case, but that's a problem if it is. Yeah. Um, the question is: Is that what's going down, or you know, are they going to listen to Grush's words? And who's who are the higher ups that can then say, you know, hey, look, David Grush is saying that nobody wants to talk to him. We can give you the if if you knew if this, this is why it stinks. Yeah, yeah. Because if stinks. you knew, if you're like, okay, look. We have this organization that, and if, if you don't believe, if you, even if you're cautious of it, yeah, there are forty people who are saying they have all of this knowledge, forty of them, but they don't want to talk to our people. Yeah. So what do we do? Get new people they want to talk to. Yes. The information is that important. Find new people. Could could one of those people step forward? And and I mean, just one could potentially open up right. a lot of people's eyes. But they ain't going to do it if they don't get if they, if they don't feel protected in one of the And that's the that is the biggest problem I think is like people get to them or yeah. they are afraid people are going to get to them that they're the men in black are out there and they're going do not say shit. You know what another problem is? And I recently heard this um and I can't it's from one of them they mentioned the you know there's a new there's a new um disclosure fund that's out there too with a lot of the you know the the regulars and the Gary Nolans and a, a lot of a lot of people that you know the names of Chris Mellon, sure. and I can't remember which guy said it, but they were asking him a question about one of the reasons, one of the things that they wish they that in order to really make this happen, what do they need? And it's something we just mentioned earlier that you don't pay that much attention to, but it makes all the sense in the world, mm. and that's budget, mm. and like anything, budget yeah. and. The point that was made that you and I have never discussed on this show that makes all the sense in the world is that back in the day, they didn't have much of a budget at all. And now they have like a million dollar budget. Oh, it's a million bucks. It's great. Yeah, it's nothing. Not, it's nothing. It's nothing. And you, he's, this guy said you need like 40 million because what you need to do is you need to protect the, each whistleblower. You yep. need to make sure that if their careers are blown out of the water, you can support them. Yep. You can give them, you, they have a, the living that they're making plus more. You have all this other ways to fight. You have this because in theory, what we're talking about, yes, the overall mission, the overall idea, the overall hope is that doing what Grush is doing and these other 40 say, okay, we are going to let people know about what's really out there, what's really happening. Here it is. Yeah. And if it goes south for them in the way that the government has been able to do in the past, right? and then these people don't have a pot to piss in. Yeah, but look, I helped 
Like nobody's going to care that you help because that's the word the world is, unfortunately. Yeah, and then it's going to just stop others from Trying stepping yeah. forward, and and that is the fear. I mean, that's why it goes all the way back. The stigma behind all of this yep. is terrible. It goes to the pilots who see something out there, and they are afraid they're going to lose their license. They're going to be told that you're not fit to fly, and so they don't want to say, yeah, I saw these bright lights that flew circles around my plane, and one of them waved at me and took a picture from their freaking smart selfie device that was alien made, whatever it may be. They're not going to say that because they could lose their license. They can right. lose their, their own well-being and livelihood. Not protected well enough. They're not, nobody's protected from this. And that's, that's what they, whoever they are, men in black, whoever you want to call them, that's what they want. Of course. They're counting because like they know, and it goes back to that statement of, well, we don't have the budget for it. Yeah. In, in my, it's just, it's just the, my mind is like, you give them all of the money. Yes. You give them all of the money. And it's like, you know, if you, no matter what do you need? Okay, here it is. And the argument against that is someone in the comments right now going, we don't know what the hell this is. Yeah. Why am I, why are we going to spend all of this money on this, on that, protecting this? Because what if these people are telling BS stories? What if this, and it's, they're fair questions to ask. And they're like, what yes. if this, what if this, and we're spending, you want 40 million for a UAP program? And we're, we're, there's wars being fought. There's this being fought. You want to spend $40 million? Screw you, sci-fi face. You know? right. and as, well, that's the stigma. Yeah. Well, that's, that's it is. Exactly. But, it, but, it's, but it's also why the hearing needs to say yeah. to the general public, like that same person that's calling us science fiction face mm -hmm. is watching that hearing and a story is covered on the nightly news going, right. there is concrete proof evidence that this 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 and this and they go okay give them the 40 mil we got to find out what's going on like that well, you can flip somebody on a dime if you give them the right information that's what every, every everything can really stop with that stigma that yeah. sci-fi face because the the mainstream media the the people who don't believe this who will maybe go in the comments here and say oh maybe they're bullshitting or whatever right. it may be my dad when i say your favorite picture mm -hmm. is of a ufo or uap and now you don't even know that these senators are standing right. out there trying to get information and it's like well, no, i don't believe that so why why don't you believe it because it gets to that area of where the human mind i feel and i where where we live in this world at this particular moment in our faces, in our phone, yeah. we're talking about the election, we're talking about the wars that are happening everywhere, whatever it may be, there is that leap that needs to be taken mm -hmm. to go to that next, the next level, that take that step, take the plunge, you know, be Indiana Jones on the Indi on the invisible bridge, take the leap of faith to go, what's out there? Yeah. What is going on? And, and whether you believe it or not, just go start digging around because I do believe it will bring more people together. But that stigma stops you every time. It, yeah, and I think that it's, but I think that's that... the biggest hurdle, I feel, well, that, that people can hide behind and, yeah, yeah, well, and yeah. say, well, this is science fiction, and so we're not going to give money to this. I just feel that there's, well, sure, and that's, but that's why they're trying to keep some of the people out of there that aren't... And know. keep the people that have something to say away because we right. don't want... Well, that's what that hour report, that hour yeah. report that came out earlier this year attempted to do one thing, and I thought it did for a little bit but it seems like it just kind of it didn't it didn't do the damage they thought it was going to do right. it just kind of prolonged yeah. some stuff but oh the other thing that Burchette said that was very interesting and made a lot of sense is that you know for those who've been following this channel for a bit and this sh particular show uh, I'd say three months ago maybe I had um former Rear Admiral Tim Gallaudet on the show with Darcy Weir and when Tim Gallaudet was on the show I asked him and I said would you testify in the next hearing? I mean, and I've said it without blinking. He said, yes. Yeah. Um, well, Barchette said he wants them to testify. Good. He wants them to testify. Well, he said he's been out there a lot talking. He's one of the guys he wants to testify. I think he should testify. He absolutely should testify. So we'll see who. And with it, because you get, you're, if you get Tim Gallaudet, you're, you're approaching all sides of it, right? You're approaching yeah. the water. You're approaching, you know, the stuff in, in Vegas. You got to get to the stuff in space. So what, what has, what, it's it's got to be stuff, man. I mean, like we've uh, it's just a broken record here, but it's got to be stuff that like you and I are on the next show from the hearing. Well, like, if, if, let's say it's on a let's say that the hearing's on a Saturday, which it won't be, but let's right. say it is. Sure. It's got to be something for me to go. I don't care what you're doing. 
with Drop your family. Drop everything. Let's go. Family. Yeah. Tell your wife, take the baby. <laughs> there are aliens coming over tomorrow. Yes. Right? And like like that kind of that's a kind of that's the kind of story that it needs to be where you're less like, yeah, wife understands. She knows oh, yeah. now. And that is what needs to happen. It's gotta be that serious to where it's just everything stops. And we've got more that that's the stuff that we know is going to happen with the hearing. How what the hearing looks like. It seems inevitable that a new public hearing is going to happen. Now, yeah. Burchett thinks maybe August. Gillibrand says, you know, July. That they're, all, they're all sniffing around that particular area. I don't know if, if Burchett necessarily said August. I think he was asked about August, and he said, eh, maybe. And they're, they're, it's, I think it lands in the, it's soon. I think it lands soon. Now, what we get out of that, I don't know. And then there's other more like kind of wild claims that came out from Chris Bledsoe in this thing that I've got, to, we'll talk about in just a moment. But as I mentioned beforehand, I mean, I think that everybody, no matter what it is with this, um, you and uh, look, I'll tell you from a moving perspective of the, the stress Ugh. when it comes to from taxes to moving to all this, it's like there's a lot that's going on, and it is very important to be able to talk to somebody if you need to, and that's why I want to tell you guys about our next sponsor. I want to tell you about BetterHelp. And let me bring them up right now. Here you go. All right, guys, this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. So BetterHelp, I've been telling you guys about BetterHelp for a while now. We've had a lot of people that they've been helped out by. So this is why the big thing is sponsored by BetterHelp, because what's the first thing you need to do? If you had an extra hour in your day, would you go for a run? Would you take a nap? Would you read a book? Would you show up for a friend? Well, the problem is a lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. So I've mentioned Roxy Stryer. She's talked about it many times. She's really benefited from better help. I've had people inside of my family that have benefited from better help because talking to someone helps. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible and it's suited to your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime. No additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with better help. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Big Thing today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Big Thing. Hey, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. And before we get back to the show itself, I also want to tell you guys about Team Liquid. I know we got some Star Wars fans over here. Well, I got this from Team Liquid, and I'm enjoying it, man. I like this, uh, this jacket that they sent. I'm going to New York soon. I'm going to need some more fall clothes. And so I figured... What a way to geek out a little bit. And I wanted to thank Team Liquid. If you want to check it out as well, go and check out this personalized link that's in the description right there. And there it is on the screen. It is easy. It's tl.gg slash villains. Check it out. Thank you to Team Liquid for sending those over. All right, back to the show, man. All right, thank you to our friends over at BetterHelp. This episode is sponsored by them, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys because when you sign up to our sponsors, you are helping out the show tremendously, and that is why I wanted to tell you guys about BetterHelp. Okay, now let's get to that. Let's get to a lot of these claims from um, from Chris Bledsoe. Okay, so this video here, Chris Bledsoe says that this video is a real UFO, so check this out. Now, you see these kind of like lights in the background, right? Oh, yeah. And, and then there's, I can't necessarily hear anything on it. I don't know if there's audio on this one but that looks like the clouds are kind of opening up and moving that's close encounters of the third kind right right there right and that's what that is it's kind of shot is et right now that's (laughs) coming through now he's saying this is legit that's now i don't know if it's making any sound through because like this particular video doesn't have any sound on it the question is i'm facing the main highway and this craft this football this egg with this light going around it looks like you know like spikes almost like blades of light and if you want to see a real description of this thing there's on youtube you can google youtube 10 interstate 10 ufo that's the real thing i know it for sure because that's what was there same kind of thing it looked just like it except i could see it it wasn't in the forest it was in front of all five of us so chris bledsoe said on the above video he said, I was driving along I-10. I saw the most amazing thing. Look, Bledsoe's one of those guys that a lot. Of, he's got a lot of cred in the, uh, in the yeah. community. And I believe Bledsoe. It, but do you believe that that video is real? So uh, here's, yeah, 
Yeah, I do. Um, so it, it's interesting. I, I brought up my friend uh, Eric Bass um, mm-hmm. before. You know, he's a, a good buddy of mine, good friend of mine. And we were talking like the day I was going to have my daughter. Yeah, and uh, he was giving me a little pep talk, and we started, of course, getting into bigger things sure. and. You know, uh, we started talking about UAPs mm-hmm. and how there's some, you know, deep shit. Um, but he brought up Bledsoe and he brought up the things that Bledsoe tends to see mm-hmm. a lot, which are these and summon them, yeah, bright lights that yeah. you can maybe summon. That's what they say he can do, yeah, right. And it occurred to me, I went, hmm, this is this might be, and then I went to my friend Kai Blackwood that I talked yeah, about yeah. before. Mm-hmm. And checked again with my story. You were there with me, Kai. What again? What was it? I believe that my experience was the actual lights, like that thing. Like that thing. That looks very similar because I had to check with Kai again, and I'm like, I, I remember it this way, and he he he's like, mm-hmm. it did this, it didn't do this, and I was like, okay, yeah. Everything that Bledsoe, when Eric says this about Bledsoe, and I start looking into uh, Bledsoe's claims, and then I check with Kai, and I believe that that is real. You do. I do because it's it's very yeah. similar with yeah. what I saw that I believe is real more than anything in the world because I looked up in the sky, and I don't know how to describe it yeah. other than something, something like, like that. that. And there were, th- there were two of them. Yeah. And they were just, one was like moving and then it started to hover and then it started to do this. And then another one behind yeah. me flashed us and then I turn around and it just kind of floats off into the sky. I mean, that is some stuff that I cannot just, dis- I can't yeah. I mean, explain. Look, look, I can't, what I'm not going to do anymore, as I said, I'm just not going to say, no, not real. Not gonna, right. I won't do it anymore. I won't do it. I'm not doing it with Miami, not doing it with the Vegas thing. I'm not doing a Peru. No. I'm not doing it anymore because I don't know anymore. And this one is more in the line of like, okay, this is a guy who has seen stuff that people take very serious, that the government takes very serious when they have talked to him about these things. And this guy says, that's legit. Yeah. You know, my the skeptic part of my brain goes, here's another video. You got to look through the trees to yeah. kind of see it, you know, and it's like, it's there. There's It's, it's more clear than most things, but it's still, you got to like peek yeah. through it. It's like, it's never... The full-on shot. And then there's that picture of this story that we did the other day that some people say that, uh, I guess they said the Y files had debunked this thing. I don't know. Um, but there was this story that came out in the Daily Mail last week about these guys in the UK, like two chefs, I think. And they found, um, they, they took a picture, and the picture you'll see, and I'll, I'll put a poster for people, is kind of trying, a pyramid, clear as day, most clear, if, if it's legit, most legit photo mm-hmm. of if you're ever going to get. And the story goes that they took it, they sold it to a magazine, whatever it was too, and then they were visited by apparently Americans, and then they were never seen again. Yeah. And then 30 some odd years later, one of their friends spoke up, and that's how the story's got out, and, and James Fox is talking to that person. Okay. And I don't know if they're putting him in there in, in the next doc. I don't know. Yeah. But... The point is that, like, there's all these particular stories and things that it said, and, like, that was a clear photo, is that, and then this is why that conversation that Ross Coldhart had the other day was, like, there is footage, there are pictures that are clear as day that he said, oh, well, there you go. That's the type of stuff that needs to come out of the hearing. That's the type of stuff that needs to go, okay, this is not fabricated, here it is, let's just stop the charade and let's, let's, let's do it. Yeah, I would hope so. We I, look. I, t- I I go off of what you said. People are going to believe what they believe. Um, you can't really. I, I just saw this uh, this quote from Keanu Reeves the other day, mm-hmm. where he goes, "I don't really argue with anybody anymore." Right. It's like that, somebody yeah. could come to me and say, "You know, two plus two equals six, right. and he's going to go, "That's great, man." You know, he just <laughs> right. he just doesn't. And and I I take a little bit of that. Yeah. from him because you can do that in politics you can go online and argue till you're blue in the face with somebody who's you know who believes in one thing people are going to believe what they believe and like when i talk to my friend kai about right. being abducted about what he has seen numerous times yeah. numerous numerous times i believe he believes now i've had then an experience where i'm standing right next to him Mm -hmm. seeing something that i don't believe but i believe more than anything that i saw something that i cannot explain now could it have been a couple helicopters sure 
Maybe. Right. They didn't move like a helicopter. But it, the, all of this stuff, it's like, it's whether or not you want to believe at the end of the day. If you don't want to believe, great. Move right. on with your life. Do whatever you need to do. That's fine. But we are here talking about certain things that we believe, and we, th th we're getting the breadcrumbs that could lead us to a very interesting new world. Sure. And, it's, and if you listen a lot, because I think Bledsoe's been talking about that particular video I think since like 2019. So if you yeah. if you listen to him, there's a full, I think there was a full Twitter Spaces interview that he did the other day. With, I believe it was with Sky Fire News. And um, it's interesting to say because it's like there are these people out there that everybody kind of knows the names of, whether it's Chris Bledsoe, whether it's the Bob Lazars, whether it's right. Stephen Greer, whether, and I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not lumping anybody into one particular group in, in general. Lou Elizondo, all these people. The question is, after the hearing, are those people going to be looked at? They're, they're going to be looked at a, Different. I, one in three ways. One, nothing's changed at all. They look the, sa the same exact way. It's like, okay, this guy says that. He says that. He says it's real. He says that. That hearing just got a lot of people talking again. Or, whoa, they showed some evidence there that shows this might be a big crock of bullshit. <laughs> and yeah. all these people were just kind of found out yeah which i don't think is likely no but that's one or all right there's no denying this anymore let's cut the bs and let's everybody work together yeah we know jerry's got to go to jail i know but i didn't work with jerry so can i work with you guys now <laughs> you know it's like now is because they know that it is indeed real and that's it that's what you hope one of the three things it's either proven without a shadow of a doubt it's either enough is enough this is all bs or nothing changes whatsoever right i unfortunately and i hope i'm wrong feel that it's the latter mm -hmm. i feel like the next hearing because of the stuff gillibrand is saying i don't think the 40 whistleblowers are going to come forward i don't think they're going to be called i think that there's going to be more frustration Burchett now is unfortunately making career out of being frustrated more yeah. than anything else yeah and they need a win are they going to get that win it seems like Grush is pissed off and saying, no, enough is enough with this Arrow stuff. Uh, they don't have access to it. I don't know what she's talking about. She's not going to be able to talk to my witnesses. None of them want to talk to her or Arrow because they don't trust them. So who will they trust and will it happen? I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think, man? Put your comments in there. Let us know. This stuff that's going down with the hearings, the stuff that's going down with Grush, the stuff that Bledsoe said, um, do you think that footage in particular is real? There was some, I don't even know. I mean, like I said, it, it just, this is what was said. He, this is not necessarily what, what Bledsoe believes, I guess. But this this was said, and it, it, as I said, I'm not going to doubt anything or say or say flat out. Not, I shouldn't say I'm not going to doubt anything. Um, but I'm not going to flat out say, no, you're lying, because anything. If people told me, oh, there's flying squirrels that, that make uh, pancakes in the trees, and I know for a fact, it's like, okay, <laughs> then you know that there's flying squirrels, that's fine. Um, but I can doubt it. And so yeah. this is the thing that Bledsoe said uh, that Tom DeLong told him. Has met Bill Tompkins, the guy who supposedly built the ships for the space program. Mm. You know, do you know who I'm talking well, about? He, the, I'm he actually, was, I was referring to some of his, uh, I was thinking actually, sorry, of some of his illustrations in my head as I was describing it. William Tompkins, correct, right. Yep, and he sat there at a little Starbucks uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, patio sure. sitting outside. Yeah. My dad, Tom DeLong, the Blink-182 guy, yep. and Bill Tompkins. And they sat there and they tried to shop my dad. Shop him as in win him over. And he sat there and he told my dad that Bill Clinton is a nine-foot-tall reptilian. He eats little girls. They slit their throat. They drink the blood and suck the life force out of their body. They zap us with these machines when we die so that they create this little hologram of a light and when our consciousness goes to it uh they reincarnate us back over and the and the big secret that the government's been hiding everybody is that we're a cattle farm for lizards that live in caves and the queen and the presidents are lizards by the way that's the same shit that everybody's reading online so if right. they're saying it you know and they're meeting my dad, who he is, been studied by the CIA and NASA and all this shit. And then he's meeting this guy and he's going to start spouting all this mumbo jumbo. It's obviously not true. It's just, it's an agenda. Okay. So that was Bledsoe's kid who oh. clearly was just like, this is horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, 
but that's the kind of stuff. And as they were saying with the agenda stuff, because you hear all that stuff. The, yeah, that that the, ties yeah. to some sort of agenda. Yes, you, and you, you hear all, between yes, and you hear all that stuff that comes out, and it's like you're like you're you're gonna lose me. <laughs> that's the that's the <laughs> stuff. Lose me that's the clear. stuff that gets I feel gets us what we talk about sets us three steps back. A hundred percent. If you start hearing this, it's like Tom DeLong, who has the credibility in where he was like, look, stuff's coming. And then yeah. stuff when he was on Rogan and then stuff happened. But when you start talking about lizard people and yeah. in and nine feet lizard people eating things and doing that, it's like, where are these caves? Let's talk about reverse engineering, please. Yeah. I don't want to talk about Zyzor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know you know what I mean? Like I'm good. No more, no, no lizard people right now. And I, and I, and I'm happy because I didn't see that full clip. I'm happy to see how kind of frustrated that Bledsoe's kid was. He's just like they're approaching my dad about this because my dad is who my dad is and has been talked to by the CIA and all these other things. And it's like, come on, they they, they want him to to they, vouch. They for want that him to vouch for it, yeah. and he clearly isn't. He's just like, uh, yeah, no, I can see these things, and I know that this is this. I'm not talking about this, but I'm not going to talk about like. You know, so the Hemia. lizard people are uh, flying the, those things. Then is that right? Bill Clinton's that, behind. And, but the that is the controls? kind of that is the kind of stuff that it's just like yeah. So uh, yeah. I don't know. Like that's yeah. the, the, these stories that come out. Like this is, but this is. I it really makes a fantastic point. Is that if you're you tuning into this show for the first time, and we get into these topics about how we want to get, I you know answers about what's flying around in the sky, and then the next thing is people talking about lizard people, you you automatically go. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, what are we doing? And we probably that, lost people. Well, but the point. reason, but, but no, because I think the reason why is that like the, when you have on, I think it brings more credibility to the blood sows. Yes. In where the blood sows are yes, going. Yes, absolutely. No, that's not what we're doing here. We're trying to bring more awareness to the stuff that's flying around in the sky and it's not lizard people. No. Because if, uh, I don't know that, I mean, when we're talking about science fiction face, you right. know what I mean? That's, 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 that's science gonna put fiction. You, that's going to put you. I mean, like I said, though, it's like um, uh, what if you want to believe in the lizard people, then more power to you. Um, but you know, that's not what we're doing on this show. Yeah, I mean, if it turns out to be true, I'd all hail King Lizard. <laughs> turns out to be true. And, we're, all, uh, we're, all, we're all screwed. <laughs> we're all, if that's the you case. know, but uh, but we we are talking about. I like it when it's based in science. Yeah, when it's based out of pe uh, people that are. You know, take oaths that yeah. have served our country who are not trying to necessarily make a buck. You know, I know yep. that kind of comes hand in hand sometimes, but like Rush, I, I think, is a, a, an American hero for stepping forward and saying what he said because it opened up my eyes, right. truly, and in the show, and it, and it moved a needle finally yeah. In, yeah. in a way that I think is very credible. And, um, it, you know, when you have somebody that says, ah, I want to turn you, and say that the the Bill Clinton's a nine foot tall lizard and he eats babies. I mean that I that it's is like, where it, it gets a little. It, it it is, and I know you got to leave, but let me let me just can I play this one more clip? Yeah, for you? absolutely. Because this is this is a big story to me, and this is what I wanted to end it on. We were talking um, both Graves and uh, Fravor did a, um, a podcast together, and they talked about a new. Um, I think this was on uh, Graves' podcast, Merch, and they were talking about a new documentary coming out, and what they said was pretty interesting. So check this clip out. Well, Dave, it was an absolute pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Um, I think, to your point, we are going to see a lot of changes in this area over the next few years. So oh. uh, perhaps we'll have you back on, and we can discuss some of them. You know, Ryan, I, I hope we do, and I hope I get invited back. I think, you know, there's some. I think there's some stuff coming out. You know, there's the documentary that I know you're a part of. It's going to be coming out that I think is going to be game changing. Um, there's been a lot of stuff said, but this, I think this is going to have the right amount of people I'm not saying who it is or when it is, but there is something being put together that I think, you know, hopefully it will come out and it'll be, you know, that one thing that pushes it over that says, all right, we can't, that the cat is definitely out of the bag because I think it, there's going to be some, some interesting information that comes out in it. So mm -hmm. It'll be, it'll be good. I think it's, Stay it's an tuned. exciting times. Doo, 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 doo. Okay. That's a good tease. That's a great tease. And it's, and you start to speculate. It's gotta yeah. be the James, it's gotta be the James Fox one, right? It's gotta be. I don't, yeah. I mean, it's I mean that it, it, it all points there. It all points there because he's been working on it for so long. It's he's he's been kind of MIA. He's, yeah. And he's been hinting. He's been hinting at yeah. it. And the big things that are happening, big information overall, 
Graves just completely just shuts down once uh, Fravor brings it up. He's just saying, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, you know, yeah, absolutely. Ah, nothing to and, see. Yeah, and like, but what he's saying, game changing. And but he's saying the same thing that you and I have essentially said on this show today <laughs> is that you can have people saying cool stuff all the time, but it's got to be stuff that you go, oh, yeah, there's no putting it back here. This is this is it. That's kind of what he's hinting at was saying the cat's out of the bag. I mean, that's what we uh, hope that it changes the way we all talk about this. So the change that it can actually bring over people who are like, wait, in their what? Phone yeah. and be, what? But but the thing is, though, the reason why I take more merit in that is that these are two out of the three guys that mm-hmm. were at the hearing at the hearings. These are two of the three guys that were, that were ballsy enough to say and they're very well respected, both those yep. guys. And to have them say, or, you know, Lo, what's coming out now, that's game changing. Not that, like, game changing. Game changing, like, we can't do, we can't do the fake tease here, though. We can't yeah. do game changing of just like, oh, yeah, but they saw this. It's like, no, no, no. What is it that you go, wow, they actually released that? What yeah. do you say to that? Yeah, exactly. Right. right. So no more science fiction face. No, no more science fiction face here. So thank you guys for joining us. I know a little bit of a shorter episode today, but it was a lot of information to talk about. A lot of stuff as far as the hearings go. What is this game changing stuff that they're talking about? Put your comments in the show. Let us know what you are thinking. I want to thank Mark Riley. Mark, where can they find you? Thank you. You can find me on the internet at Riley around R E I L L Y around. See you there. So in the description, not only can you find our wonderful sponsor here today, BetterHelp, you can also find the first thing you'll see in the description is the link to the Down to Earth channel. If you're not subscribed to that channel already, then do it because next week, if you enjoy UAP Tuesday, that is where this show will live. Starting next Tuesday, that show will be on there each and every Tuesday morning, so make sure you check it out. Also, if you're going to be in New York and you want to come see a live show that's movie-related, it's going to be myself and the great Dan Merle. We're going to be live in New York doing a show. So come see us June 21st. I put the link in the description for that also. You can also see the live stream if you want to do that. But that's movie related. It's not going to, we're not going to be talking about UAPs or anything there too. But if you want to come check it out, you can do it. But once again, Down to Earth with Christian Harloff. Make sure you do it. Thanks for joining us here today. For Mark Riley, I'm me, and you're you.